Hello students, welcome to Ants classes. Let's do squares and square roots, chapter 3, exercise 3C. Now there are some properties of square numbers that we need to learn. So let's begin with the first property. What does the first property say? Square numbers always end with the digits 0, 1, 4, 5, 6 or 9. Now this is something you can learn up children. All square numbers. They will end in these digits or in the units place, you will find only these digits. That is 0, 1, 4, 5, 6 or 9. So learn that up by heart. Now let's see some examples. Now 30 square, you take 30 square, it's ending in a 0. Okay, so it's ending in 0. You take another number 11, 11 square ends in 1. Take another number 8 square ends in 4. Okay, 0, 1, 4. So here we have 0, 1, 4. Take another number 5, 5 square, it's ending in 5. 6 square, it's ending in 6. 13 square, it's ending in 9. You take any number and you square it up like this, it will end in any one of these digits. It will always end up in one of these digits. If it's another digit, you will not find that to be a perfect square. So if you have square numbers, you will find them all ending in these digits. And these are some examples. That is the first property. Second property says a number having two, three, seven or eight in its units place is never a perfect square. So we just uh, saw the first property and the numbers should end in particular digits. Whereas here, if it's ending in two, three, seven or eight, it is never a perfect square. Example. None of the following numbers is a perfect square. 12, 22, 32, 42, 52, or you take any number that's ending in 2. It is never a perfect square. It doesn't have a perfect square root. So it's not a perfect square. It doesn't have a square root. Now, if it ends in 2, it's not a perfect square. If it ends in 3, it's not a perfect square. 33, 43, 53, any number that ends in 3 is not a perfect square. Then ending in 7, we said 2, 3, 7 or 8. Ending in 7, 17, 27, 37, 47, 57 and so on. If it ends in 7, it's not a perfect square. And the last one is 8, 28, 38, 58, 48. Any number that's ending in 8 is never a perfect square. So this is easy to remember. 2, 3, 7, 8. So 2, 3, 7, 8. Any number having these in the units place or ending with these is never a perfect square. This is the second property. Now, the third property, what does it say? The square of a number ending with 1 or 9. So if you have a number which ends with 1 or with 9, that square ends in 1. So if you have a number which ends in 1 or 9, the square of that number will end in 1. Like if you take 11 square, 11 square, this number is ending in 1, isn't it? 1 and the square of that is also ending in 1. So if a number ends with 1, that one square will always end at 1. Or if it ends with 9 also, like this 29 square, the square will be 1. I hope you got that. If a number ends with 1 or 9, like here, see, it's ending with 1, it's ending with 9, the square will always end with 1. Can you see? Okay, so this is the third property. Then we have the fourth property, the square of a number ending with 4 or 6. So this time you take number ending with 4 or 6, that square will always end in 6. See, now if you take 14 square, 14 is ending in 4, the square is ending in 6. 16 square, 16 is ending in 6, the square is ending in 6. So if it ends with 4 or 6, if the number ends with 4 or 6, the square will always end in 6. We have 24 square. Can you see? This is 4. It's ending in 4 and the square is ending in 6. 36 square, it's ending in 6 and the square is also ending in 6. So keep this in mind. The fourth property is if a number ends with 4 or 6, that one square will always end in 6. Fifth property. 
square numbers can only have an even number of zeros at the end. That means they can have two zeros at the end or four zeros at the end or six zeros at the end. They cannot have an odd number of zeros like this. If you take 20 square, can you see it's ending in two zeros? So this is a perfect square. Only then they become perfect squares. So 20 square ends in two zeros. 30 square is 900 again ending in two zeros. 40 square is a 800 ending in two zeros. So square numbers can only have an even number of zeros. You cannot see three zeros or you cannot see five zeros or you cannot see seven zeros because they are odd numbers. It can only have an even number of zeros. Two zeros or four zeros or six zeros, even number of zeros. That is the fifth property. Now the sixth property. When a perfect square number is divided by 3, if you take a perfect square number, you divide it by 3, the remainder will always be 0, 1. Okay, so you take a perfect square number like 16. 16 is a perfect square number, isn't it? The square root of 16 is 4. 4 fours are 16. So 16 is called a perfect square number. When you divide 16 by 3, let's divide 16 by 3 and see. Divide 16 by 3. 3 fives are 15. And what is the remainder? The remainder is 1. So always the remainder will be 1. If you take a perfect square number divided by 3, the remainder is always 1. Another example, 9 is a perfect square, isn't it? What is the square root of 9? 3. 3 threes are 9. Now when you divide 9 by 3, the remainder is 0. So what does this property say? When a perfect square number is divided by 3, it will leave a remainder 0 or 1. Okay, so here we saw 0, here we saw 1. So keep that also in mind. This is the sixth property. Seventh property. For any natural number n, we know what natural numbers are? Numbers that begin from 1. Then we have to follow this. That means n plus 1 minus n. n plus 1 square minus n square is equal to n plus 1 plus n. What does this mean? Okay, let's take an example. Now, if n is 6, suppose I take n to be 6. Okay, so wherever I have n, I'm going to put 6. So we have this. Now, wherever there is n, I'm going to put 6. So this will be 6 plus 1. Isn't it n? So 6 plus 1 square minus n is how much? 6. So 6 square is equal to. So here, actually, what is this? 6 plus 1 is 7. So 7 square minus 6 square. So can you see this? It's 6 and 7. That's why it is n plus 1. This is 6. n plus 1 is 7. So 6 and 7. So 7 square minus 6 square. How do we find out? 7 square is 7. 7s seven are 49. Minus 6 square is 6. 6 are 36. Now minus these two. 49 minus 36. You will get 13. Now let's see on the other side here what we have. What does this mean? n is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. So 7 plus n is 6. How much is 7 plus 6? 13. So here we have 13 and here we have 13. That means, what does it mean? It means that if you take a number and take the number next to it. Now 6 plus 1 is 7. The number next to 6 is 7. 7 square minus this number square. Okay. So 7 square minus 6 square is actually 7 plus 6. 7 square minus 6 square is actually 7 plus 6. So we've got the answer directly. You don't even have to do all this to find. You just have to do 7 plus 6. So 7 square minus 6 square is 7 plus 6. This time, let's continue with the seventh property just to make you understand this. We'll take another example. This time, let's say n is equal to 4. Okay, so here n is equal to 4. That means this is 4 plus 1, 5. 5 minus 4 square. Okay, we're talking about that. So here we're going to substitute n with 4. So this will be 4 plus 1, the whole square, minus 4 square, which is equal to 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 square minus 4 square. 5 square is how much? 5 fives are 25. 
4 squared is 4, 4 is asked 16. Now here, 25 minus 16 is 9. So we've got 9 here. Now let's see on the other side what we have. n plus 1 and n is how much? 4. So 4 plus 1 is 5 and n is 4. 5 plus 4 is 9. So can you see the answer, the same answer? We can get it easily without working out all these steps. That means you have to remember this, a number that you've taken here, plus 1. That means a number next to it. So n is 4. This will be 5. 4, 5. So can you see? 5 square minus 4 square is simply 5 plus 4. 5 square minus 4 square is 5 plus 4. We have worked it out and seen that the answer is correct. So I hope you've understood the seven properties. Now keep this also in mind. Keep this important point in mind. The sum of the first n odd natural numbers is n square. That is, with an example, let's understand this. If n is equal to 2, that means we have to take the sum of the first two odd natural numbers. And the answer is 2 square. That's interesting, isn't it? So if n is 2, that means we have to take the sum of the first two odd natural numbers. What are the two odd natural numbers? First two, 1 and 3. These are the odd natural numbers, isn't it? And the answer is 2 because we have taken two odd numbers, 2 square. So how much is this? 1 plus 3 is 4, 2 twos are 4. Now if I take n to be 3, so here n is 3, that means the sum of the first three odd natural numbers will be 3 square. That's interesting, isn't it? So what are the first three odd numbers? 1 plus 3 plus 5. These are the first three odd numbers. So the answer will be the 3 square. You have taken 3 numbers, so 3 square. Let's add this up and see. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. And here, 3 3s are 9. Can you see the answer is the same? Now, if we take n to be 4. So here, if n is 4, then take the sum of the first odd natural numbers. The answer will be 4 square. So what are the first 4 odd natural numbers? 1, 3, 5. Seven. So we have taken four numbers, so the answer will be four square. You take three numbers, the answer will be three square. You take two numbers, the answer will be two square. You take five numbers, the answer will be five square. But they should all be odd natural numbers, not any number. Okay, they should all be odd natural numbers. So here I have taken four odd natural numbers, my answer will be four square. Let's try it out and see. Let's add up these. So one plus three is four. 4 plus 5 is 9, 9 plus 7 is 16. So here when you add this up, you get 16. Now what is 4 square? 4 fours are 16. So can you see that? It's the same. Okay. So if you have 4 odd numbers, the answer is 4 square. If you have 3 odd numbers, the answer is 3 square. If you have 2 odd numbers, the answer is 2 square when you add these up. So this is an easy way for you to find out. We have to use all these in our exercise. And let's keep in mind all the properties that we have learned. So the first type is the multiple choice type questions. We have to choose the correct answer from the options given below. First question, the value of 18 square minus 17 square is. Now when you have a question like this, you don't have to actually multiply 18 into 18 minus 17 into 17. Instead, use this property that we learned. We learned that n plus 1 square minus n square, it is just like this. This square minus this square is equal to n plus 1 plus n. Now, what is the meaning of this? If n is 17, n plus 1 will be 18. So, 18 square minus 17 square is the same as this. Okay. So, 18 square minus 17 square. Now, because this is n plus 1, this is 1 more than this number. So, 17, 1 more than that is 18. So, you don't have to actually do the multiplication. You can straight away find out. So, n plus 1. n is, we know, 17. n plus 1 will be 1 more than 17, which is 18. So, that is 18 plus 17, which is 35. So did you see that we found the answer easily? You just have to apply this. You don't have to actually do the multiplication here. So the answer is 35 and that is option 
C. So option C, 35 is the correct answer. Next question. The sum of the first four odd natural numbers. This also we learned. So you don't have to write down the first four odd uh, natural numbers. You don't have to add it up. Okay. Instead, you just have to follow this which says the sum of the first four odd natural numbers will be four square. The sum of the first three odd natural numbers will be three square. The sum of, uh, sum of the first five odd natural numbers will be five square. So here we are talking about four numbers. That's why we are saying four square. So let's see if we have the option four square here. Here there are two fours, but we don't have the option four square. So option C and D are not correct. Now out of these two cubed and two to the power of four, which one will be equal to four square? Now here, let's take this number and write it here four square. Now look only at four. Four, can I write it as two square? Yes, two into two is four and this is raised to the power of two. So what have I done? I've taken this 4 and I've written as 2 square because 2 into 2 and this square is already there so it's here. Now what do I do here? Here I can say 2 raised to the power of now when you have one power raised to another power you multiply the powers. So that it will be 2 raised to the power of 2 into 2. So this is 2 raised to the power of 4. So this is our answer which is the option here. That is option B, which is 2 raised to the power of 4. So this is our answer. So let's take that answer 2 raised to the power of 4. Question 3. 24 square has n in its units place. What is the value of n? What's the meaning of this question? The number is 24. This is the number. Now if you square it, the answer will have n in the units place. So that is the units place and the answer will have n in the units place. The question is what is this n? What is the value of this n? So again here you don't have to multiply 24 into 24 and find out. Instead apply this property which says the square of a number ending with 4 or 6. See this number is ending with 4 and the square will always end in 6. That means the value of n is 6. The value of n is 6. Because what does the property say? Any number which ends in 4 or 6, the square of that number will always have 6 in the units place. So here it's ending in 4. So in the units place it's 6. So first a is 4 which is not the answer. 16. In the units place you can't have 16. Two digits. You must have only one digit. C is also wrong. Uh, option D is the correct answer. We have 6 in the units place. Question 4. A number ends in 5 zeros. So the number of zeros in the square will be how much? So here, this also we learned square numbers can only have an even number of zeros at the end. So here we have 5 zeros. That means there will be an even number 5 into 2 that is 10. So there will be 10 zeros in that number. So what is our answer? Option C. We will stop with this for now children. In our next video, we will do the remaining questions. Thank you children.